Well, right. If you thought it was a one-day wonder, think again. Oil continuing to advance after a nice pop yesterday, another 4% surge today. And all of this in reaction to OPEC uh, announcing for the first time in, what, about eight or nine years that it's going to curtail production by about 1.2 million barrels a day. Half of that onus falling on Saudi Arabia as the world's number one oil producer. Uh, but others are sharing, and even non-members of OPEC, Russia, saying it's going to freeze production here. Now, of course, this all means everyone has to stick to that. It's like a, a diet commitment, I like to joke here, that a lot of people break anyway, not me, but a lot of people do break these things. Former Shell Oil President John Hopmeister, whether he thinks this holds, and if it does, what it means for us. What do you think, John? Well, I think it's still a big question mark whether it holds, and I think the faster the oil price rises, the less the chances that it will hold, because there are a lot of folks out there, OPEC as well as other producers, that are really short of cash, and have lived, uh, you know, such with such uh, difficulty in the last few years that they'll do anything they can to raise production in the short term in order to capture some of that available money with the higher oil price. But we'll see. Uh, I think that what helps the price rise is not just the anticipation of the cut, but there's also the natural decline of the oil fields, and in addition, there's the already announced major cutbacks in capital spending by all kinds of independent producers that simply aren't going to spend money in 2017 because they don't have it. What if, you know, it gets to a point where, uh, you know, Donald Trump comes in, a far more friendly force for the traditional uh, energy industry, uh, takes away a lot of regulations, the impediments to oil drilling and the rest and uh, fracking and the rest, and uh, could that lead to, to, to more supply? get these prices back down? What do you think? Well, I don't think we're going to see any kind of immediate return to prosperity or to rapid production increase. Hmm. And, th and that's because the, the money's not there, and the banks are still reluctant to loan to oil and gas producers from you know, the past. And, and we also have a supply chain that's broken, and we are short on people. And so the combination means it's going to take a year, year and a half, to kind of gear up the system, any relief that the new administration can provide from the burden that the previous administration or the current administration put on the industry would be welcome. But what also may happen, Neil, is that in response to any relaxation, uh, we're going to see a lot of activism, like we're seeing in North Dakota right now. We're going to see a lot of activism, maybe not in Texas or Oklahoma, but in other parts like Pennsylvania, Ohio perhaps, where there will be a, a, just a built-in resistance to whatever the Trump administration tries to do. Oh, you can count and, on it. And it's, yeah. it, it's the whole anti-fossil movement that has gained strength over the last eight years. The absurdity, of course, is these people don't mind raising the price of the product to the American people, which would otherwise, and will, which will dent the otherwise good economic growth of the American economy. Very good point. Very good point. No matter what happens there. I mean, I'm, I'm all in on all types of energy. If that's what you're doing, the less we rely on folks abroad, uh, I think the better off we are. But it's a silly notion. Um, but, John, always great chatting with you. Thank you very, very much.